A distal tibia 4-3-A1 fracture. Percutaneous plating using an LCP distal tibia plate. The 51-year-old patient sustained this extra-articular distal tibia and fibula fracture by stumbling on a stair. According to the Miller AO classification, he suffered a 4-3-A1 fracture. Although this rather distal tibia fracture could also be stabilized by a nail, the new LCP for distal tibia fractures was selected. It's based on the internal fixator principle. This plate is pre-contoured anatomically to the bone. On the plastic model, the level of the undisplaced fibula fracture is indicated, and the plane of the short oblique distal tibia fracture can be followed. A small posterior lip, or Folkman's triangle, has been avulsed, but because of its size it will not be fixed separately. If fractures close to a joint are stabilized with conventional non-locking screw and plate systems, there is a danger of a secondary loss of reduction due to successive loosening of individual screws in the section close to the joint. The main feature of the internal fixator principle is the locking head screws, which provide angular stability. Upon loading, these screws that are anchored in the plate do not loosen or pull out, therefore they prevent secondary deformity or collapse. The fracture first will be stabilized with a 3.5 mm cortex lag screw. The plate is then placed percutaneously on the bone and held with two K wires. Distally, two 3.5 mm self-tapping locking head screws are inserted. The K-wire is removed. And a third screw inserted. Proximally, bicortical locking head screws are placed in the third and fifth plate holes. And a monocortical screw in the most proximal plate hole. The K-wire is removed. To insert the lag screw, the 2.5 mm and 3.5 mm drills, the 3.5 mm tap, the 3.5 2.5 double drill guide, the depth gauge and the small hexagonal screwdriver are required. To insert the locking head screw, the following instruments are available. The 3.5 LCP drill sleeve, the 2.8 mm drill, the depth gauge, the screwdriver shaft, the torque limiter and the handle. The patient is placed in the supine position with a pad under his buttock to slightly rotate the leg internally. The leg is elevated or placed on a square cushion. A tourniquet is always applied, but only inflated if there is uncontrollable bleeding. If a bone defect is expected, the ipsilateral iliac crest is prepped so that an autologous bone graft can be harvested if needed. This exercise will be done on a foam-covered model that simulates the soft tissue cover. For better visibility, some sequences will be shown on a bare bone. The landmarks to be identified by palpation are the joint line of the ankle, the medial malleolus, the tibial crest, And here the tip of the displaced proximal fracture fragment. The undisplaced fibula fracture may be fixed with a one-third tubular plate to increase stability and reduce pain. The level of the fracture and the rather posterior straight incision are indicated. The fibula has been stabilized with a five-hole, one-third tubular plate, although this step is not part of the exercise. Instead of a traditional extensive approach, several short incisions were chosen. For guidance, the LCP distal tibia plate is positioned over the medial side of the leg to plan the incisions. For the anatomical reduction of this short oblique fracture, 
a slightly longer distal incision is needed so that the fracture can be seen and the pointed reduction forceps can be introduced. In making the incision, it's important to keep in mind that foam cuts somewhat differently than human skin. The soft tissues are gently retracted to allow minimal exposure of the fracture. In the clinical situation, the fracture would be cleaned of hematoma so that it could be precisely reduced. The fracture is reduced directly by manipulation and by using the pointed reduction forceps. Care must be taken that the forceps do not block the entry point for the crucial lag screw. The independent 3.5 mm lag screw is placed at a right angle to the fracture plane, starting with the 3.5 mm drill bit for the glide hole. The best direction is usually parallel to the plane of the reduction forceps. The 2.5 mm drill sleeve is inserted into the glide hole to direct the 2.5 mm drill bit for the thread hole. The length is measured with the depth gauge. The 3.5 mm cortex tap and the appropriate sleeve are used to tap. The 3.5 mm cortex screw is inserted without countersinking. The forceps is removed. With the conventional method using standard screws, inaccurate bending of the plate inevitably leads to loss of primary reduction because the bone is drawn to the plate. This disadvantage does not arise if an LCP with locking head screws is used. The plate does not have to be pre-shaped absolutely anatomically. In addition, the plate is not pressed against the bone, which prevents any damage to the periosteum. With the bending pin screwed into the most distal plate hole as a handle, the slightly contoured LCP distal tibia plate is introduced and advanced proximally along the medial surface of the tibia between the periosteum and the subcutaneous tissue. An elevator can be used to prepare the root for very long plates. Palpation identifies the position of the proximal end of the plate, which is then exposed by a short incision. The final position of the plate is checked under image intensification just before K-wires are placed in the special holes at each end of the plate for preliminary fixation. The bending pin is removed. The threaded LCP drill guide is screwed into the selected plate hole gently and tightened. It helps to guide the screw and prevents the locking head from jamming. Due to the larger core diameter of the locking head screws, a 2.8 mm drill bit is used. The drill guide is removed. The depth is measured. A 3.5 mm green self-tapping locking head screw is inserted, first with the power drive, but not driven fully home. The last few turns have to be done by hand with the torque limiting screwdriver. A short click signals that the screw has reached its correct position. The next screw is inserted in the same manner. The plate is not pressed against the bone, which avoids unnecessary squeezing of the periosteum. 
The K wire is removed before the third locking head screw is inserted. Now the plate is well anchored to the short distal fragment. Moving proximally, a stab incision is made to approach the third plate hole and to introduce the drill sleeve for percutaneous screw placement. Two more locking head screws are inserted. The K wire is removed to finish the fixation. This is the clinical situation before skin closure. To see the result under the foam, it's cut open along the tibial crest and the bare bone model is inspected. This simple fracture was anatomically reduced and fixed with a lag screw. The LCP distal tibia plate was applied in this case as a purely internal fixator, thereby protecting the interfragmentary compression screw. These are the post-operative radiographs of a similar case that was fixed without a lag screw.